Will Cyclops' bold and innovative plan to reinvigorate the X-Men team come to throw wish in, or will outside forces see it all brought down? Let's hop into the pages of X-Men number one, a brand new series from Jerry Duggan, and find out together, shall we? So then, as this book opens up, we're introduced not to a new mutant character, but a new human character. His name is Kelvin Hang, a half-Chinese, half-Russian boy genius who graduated MIT at the tender age of 13. Kelvin always dreamed of using his super smarts to make the world a better place for everyone. Unfortunately, being, you know, a child thrown into an adult's world, he was much too trusting and ended up getting taken for a small fortune during his first business venture. Kelvin would fall out of the public eye for a decade, but when he came back, he came back with an avengeance, having completely reinvented himself and with a brand new company called Fei Long. You know, I'd make a Fei Long from Street Fighter joke right about now, but I feel like only five people might end up getting it. Kelvin planned to make a major splash in the worlds of climate science and space travel travel, he was going to be the first man ever to go to Mars. There was just one big giant glaring problem, and that is mutant kind claimed all of Mars when no one was looking. Oops. Meaning that this kid's entire work was once again all for nothing. And with no one else to blame, Kevin Hang decided to swear a bloody vengeance against all of mutant kind, so you can add him to the ever-growing list of enemies that Krakoa and the X-Men are slowly amassing. Now from there, we transition on over to New York, where the X-Men have launched their brand new base of operations the Treehouse. A brand new state-of-the-art facility that will serve as the staging ground for the X-Men's brand new superhero operations under Cyclops. But it's so much more than that, too. It's not just a base of operations. There's also a public park for everyone, human and mutant alike. The Treehouse is also the greenest building in all of New York. And, as we find out later from visiting journalist Ben Urich, the plot of land that the X-Men chose to build the Treehouse on is actually quite historic. It's the former Seneca Garden, a famous plot of land that belonged to black owners that was stolen out from under them to help build Central Park. It's on this piece of land that the X-Men have decided to build a memorial to the mutants they've lost. I gotta say, I really like how Yurik is used in this story. He's often shown to be the last sane man in a truly insane super world, and yet even though he had his own reservations about Krakoa and their growing military power, he just kind of can't be scared of a treehouse. What kid didn't want to live in a treehouse? Yurik also goes out of his way in his article to re-establish the difference between the mutants of Krakoa and the X-Men because even though they are closely aligned, there is actually quite a difference between them. Now Cyclops and his brand new team have barely had enough minute to unload all the boxes for their brand new base when New York ends up coming under attack by some strange extraterrestrial threat from space. It's big, it's purple, it's squid-like, it's a freaking Reaper from Mass Effect. No, literally, they call them the Mind Reavers, but seriously, it's a Reaper. Obviously, this newly formed X-Men team wants to make a good first impression, what with their first time back in New York City, and this is the perfect opportunity to do so. The creature is heavily armored, which means they're not getting at it the old-fashioned way, and it seems to be sending out a psychic pulse that is meant to kill any mammalian creature on Earth, which, if you've been paying attention, is a lot of Earth. Luckily, with the help of Jean and Polaris, they're able to create a metal bubble around them that gives them the time they need to think of a plan of attack. Forge, with the help of Sync, who is synced up to Forge's amazing building power, think the only way to fight a giant monster like this is with a giant robot, because, well, yeah, naturally, of course. This Megazord Voltron ploy actually ends up working a lot better than they thought. Using the giant robot, they're able to knock off some of the armored plating for this creature so Laura Kinney Wolverine can hop on in and cut it up from the inside out. Yes, yeah, so it would seem that Krakoa's murder-no-man law does not extend to giant, possibly sentient, evil space squids. The X-Men end up being the heroes of the day, not just for all the people who live in the city, but also also, the Avengers and Fantastic Four who stopped on by because, well, they live in the area, and generally, they're pretty excited to have the X-Men back doing the superhero thing again. Of course, now that they've defeated the bad guy, the question becomes who exactly sent it and why. The answer may actually end up surprising you because for that, we head to the Game Planet, the big casino world that we've seen a couple times throughout some newer Marvel stories. It seems that now that the X-Men have joined the greater cosmic universe, it's ticked off a lot of way more powerful alien forces like Cordyceps Jones, the new 
leader of the casino world. He's taken bets on who can exactly destroy Earth first. Yeah, that's right. The aliens aren't exactly making the distinction between mutant kind and Earth kind. For them, it's all the same. And hey, if you're an eagle-eyed reader, you can probably see one of the aliens drinking at the casino bar there is none other than the High Evolutionary, who we already know from solicitations is going to be part of this story moving forward. Now, as the comic comes to an end, we're treated to yet another scene. We see a mad scientist conducting horrifying experiments with human subjects. It's probably Kelvin, but it's actually left open-ended who it exactly might be. This mad scientist is actually clued into an idea that many people are slowly but surely starting to realize, and that is dead mutants are starting to come back to life and other mutants aren't staying dead. In fact, Ben Urich was working the same story too when he visited the treehouse, and there's no telling where all of this is going to go as the comic comes to a close. And so that was X-Men issue number one, everybody, and overall I would say, yeah, that's pretty good. I've been carrying a torch for Jerry Duggan as a writer for a very long time now, so I'm super happy to see him get put on the AAA X-Men book. I would also say, even if you haven't seen anything else that's happened in the hickman Krakoa era of X-Men, this book is probably pretty easy enough for you to pick up and follow along if you have to. Obviously, one of the best things about X-Men books right now is that there's a book for pretty much every different taste out there, and the whole X-Men line is basically one giant buffet of superhero goodness, and this book, I think, more than anything, fills the traditional superhero role that was kind of lacking in the other X-Men books. They're back in New York, they're interacting with other superhero groups, and we even get fun cameo appearances by characters like Yurik, who I really hope stick around. Again, we've seen him do so many great things in Spider-Man and Daredevil, I would love to see him become the X-Men beat reporter for a bit. Overall, I feel comfortable giving this one an 8.5 out of 10, and I'm interested to see what else Duggan is going to bring to the X-Men during this new reign of X era that we're currently in. Hey there everyone, Cape Jewel again, and I want to thank you so much for watching to the end of the video. As always, if you liked what you see, be sure to like, subscribe, comment. It really helps drive engagement and helps me out too. Also, if you are a patron, which you can become for as little as a dollar a month, you will get exclusive content that no one else can ever see, and you'll get to see the Comic Multiverse podcast before anyone else too. You can check out all this and more down in the description. And until next time everyone, this has been Cape Jewel, and I'll see you all next time. Cheers.